Please rise. Our liturgy this evening is on page 243. Jesus Christ is the light of the world.
the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with church honors and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Our hymn is hymn 658. readings listed there are actually incorrect. I forgot to change them from last week. The first scripture reading is from 1 Thessalonians. That, uh, I, I don't have a few Bible up here, so I can't give you the page number. You're just going to have to go off of your old-fashioned finding Bible ver uh, verses skills. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and it's verses 13 through 18. It, it's both of the letters of the Thessalonians deal quite a bit with end times stuff, and we'll talk a little bit more about this one uh, and the gospel reading that we'll read in a second as well in the sermonette. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. 
For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left behind, who, sorry, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading is Luke chapter 17. I'm lucky I'm remembering these references here. And it's verses 20 through 37, beginning at verse 20 of chapter 17 and continuing through the end of the chapter. Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there. Behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And he said to the disciples, the days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look there, or look here. Do not go out or follow them, for as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. First, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, drinking, airing, being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. I tell you, in that night there will be two in one bed. One will be taken, and the other left. There will be two women grinding at the mill. One will be taken, and the other left. And they said to him, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. In many ways, and in many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. So there's plenty of seemingly, I suppose, confusing things in both of those readings. And uh, what I've been doing for the readings for this midweek service is following the one-year lectionary. In our Sunday services, we use the three-year lectionary. And so I've just been using the one-year lectionary where we kind of get uh, both worked in there. And so this is the selection for this coming Sunday for the one-year lectionary, the second to last Sunday of the church year. And I started looking at it and I thought, well, it's pretty fitting considering what we just had on Sunday. We're talking about end times things and the weird stuff that people say about the end of the world and people get confused about it and they're not sure about what's going on. And I, one of the examples that I gave was the rapture and this idea that Christ is going to come back in secret and he's just going to pull a bunch of people up into heaven and people are just going to miss it. There's a popular Christian song by Casting Crowns. I can't remember what it's called right now. Old Bethlehem, maybe. And it's really good for like two verses and then it's terrible for the third verse. The third verse is pure millennialism and rapture. And it's, there's no biblical basis for it. Where they claim to have a biblical basis is actually in these two texts that we read tonight. They'd say, well, look at Matthew. It says there's two people here, and one is taken and the other left. So one's taken up into the clouds, the other's left behind, and it's the rapture. But there's a couple of huge problems with that claim from this text. First of all, it's helpful to notice that this text and the one in 1 Thessalonians are talking about the same thing. And when you do that, should have kept my finger in that Thessalonians text. When you do that, you can cross-reference them. They're both talking about the end of the world, clearly. 
And when you look at 1 Thessalonians, notice what it says two occasions. And we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds. And, that, and then earlier he says, this we declare to you by word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord. Well, you cross-reference that with Luke 17, and he says, two in the field, one taken, the other left. If you've heard of the uh, Left Behind movies, those were um, some movies that, they were Christian movies, they were all about the rapture. There was like a, a fictional story about, this is what, you know, this is when the rapture comes, they're called Left Behind. See, the basic concept is, all the believers get taken off to heaven, and the people who are left behind, they've got some time, basically, a thousand years, well, maybe it's not. It depends on who you talk to, I suppose. They've got some time here on earth, and, and you know, they basically have another chance. Uh, they're the ones who are left behind. Notice, they're saying that the people left behind are not believers, and that to be taken is a good thing. But here, he says, well, let me go back to 1 Thessalonians and read this again. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. There's a missing part to this. There's an unspoken thing here, because Paul's using this as a teaching of comfort. He's not trying to teach the law right now. So he doesn't say anything about those who are condemned to hell. We know from other teachings that it's certainly there. When he says, we who are alive, who are left, he's excluding those who have gone to hell. So, in that scenario, the ones who are taken are the ones who go to hell. So that in itself disproves their foundation for this doctrine. But there's something much simpler than that in these texts as well. Their idea is that it's going to be this secret thing, right? It's come and it's, the people are just going to vanish. And like I mentioned on the side of the other cars, the bumper sticker that says, in case of a rapture, this car will be driverless. But notice that in both texts, one of the main things that Jesus is seeking to make clear is you are not going to miss this. No one is going to miss the end of the world. It's not going to be secret. In Thessalonians, he said, the Lord will descend with the, with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And then the dead in Christ will rise first. All the people are going to be raised from their graves. And in Matthew, he said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be coming to the Son of Man. Everybody's going to be going about their regular daily lives. And if nothing's happy because they're not listening to the word of God. Noah did. Abraham did. Lot did. And the other example of Abraham and Lot, the word is there, the warning is there. Most people don't listen. They go about their lives as if nothing's ever going to happen. And then, pow, something happens. And everyone sees it. There was no one on earth who missed the flood. There was no one in Sodom and Gomorrah who missed that destruction. And there were no second chances. That's another big point that Jesus is making. There were no second chances for either of them. He says, as the lightning goes from the east to the west, in, in a moment, and yet blindingly obvious, so it will be with the end of the world. Jesus is going to come. When he comes, it's going to be sudden. It's going to be like lightning. Most people are just going to be going about their daily lives as if he's never going to come. But we who trust in him take great comfort in this because he says to us that when he comes, he's going to bring with him the, the angels to the come down. He's going to raise the dead. And then he's going to cause us to go and join with them. And we will be forever with the Lord. None of this, uh, okay, we'll be up there for a while, and, our, and our, I'm not even sure I understand what their, what their idea is about the bodily resurrection here, the rapture teaching, right? Because notice what he bases this all on the bodily resurrection. The dead in Christ, they're going to rise bodily. And we who are left, he means the people who are still alive, who didn't die, their bodies that need to be raised. We're going to be joined together with those dead believers who will be raised in their bodies, and we will all go to be with God forever in a bodily existence. Not some spiritual floating around, playing harps, whatever, and we'll dwell with him forever. And what comfort that gives to us, because we know that this is happening, and we know that we can be prepared for it. We know that he wants to give this to us through his son, Jesus Christ, who came bodily down to earth. 
and suffered bodily on the cross and rose bodily from the grave. And just as Job said so many years beforehand, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that at the last, he shall stand upon the earth. I shall see him with my eyes, with my physical eyes. How my heart yearns within me. Amen. Your eyes. Continue with the Magnificatus, page 
bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. desires, all good counsels, and all just words. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 